Hello and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It is the top 16 superstars, it is the Oceana region and the Manufacturer Series that we are focusing on here today. It is going to be very, very exciting this one given the racing that we have seen in the other regions so far. If you've been watching them, if you've caught up with them, then you're in for an absolute treat. If you haven't watched anything and this is your first time tuning in, well, you're in for a treat then as well because I'm sure it is going to be absolutely brilliant. My name is Tom Brooks alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent. We're here to guide you through the action here today. And Jimmy, this is going to be very exciting to see the different manufacturers at a legendary circuit as well. Yep, definitely. We're going to be racing at one of the best circuits in the world. Manufacturers, of course, offering up a whole host of different cars as opposed to nations. We tend to be just one. So fun and interesting racing all up and down the field, I think. Yeah, certainly so. Let's have a look at the circuit we're talking about then in a few moments. But before that, we'll look at the point standings, shall we? Going into this event, you can see Adam2167 leads the way. 7,060 points he has accumulated over the seven rounds of the top 16 superstars there so far. He's got a comfortable advantage, actually, of over 200 points to Nick McCosey in the Mercedes there in second position. Now, the crucial thing is here, Jimmy, it's not necessarily so important for position, but it's important where you are with that different manufacturer. So there are different drivers, of course, competing with the same manufacturer. For example, Carbass and Mint GTR, they are both in the Porsche car. Now, if you're the top driver of that manufacturer, so Carbass in this instance, he will be going through to represent that manufacturer in the world final. Yeah, so it kind of makes picking a, uh, a manufacturer at the start of the season quite a difficult choice. Do you go for a, a car that you know is going to be fairly competitive over the season? Or do you maybe go for a lesser known brand that you, you know, is not going to be picked as much and have potentially less competition regardless? So we have six different manufacturers in the top six, which I think shows you just how close the manufacturer series is. Yeah, absolutely right. Let's have a little bit look of a look further down the order. You can see there, KY, uh, KY Youngster, rather, I should say, in ninth position. He is the lead driver for uh, Volkswagen, whereas you've got in 14th position, GTX 601 there. He is the second driver for Volkswagen, but quite a significant way off of the ninth place man at the moment. So it would be Youngster that goes through as it stands as we look a bit further down the order. Anyway, let's have a look at the circuit that we're going to be racing at then, shall we? The Mount Panorama Motor Racing Circuit in Australia. 6.2 kilometres, a ribbon of perfection in terms of tarmac as well. Some tight corners, some twisty corners, some with runoff, some without. Lots of undulation, lots of fast and frightening sections as well. It's a circuit that rewards the brave, doesn't it? Yeah, it's that lack of runoff that makes this circuit so appealing, I think, as a driver especially at the top, uh, going from the cutting, which is a T4 on your uh, your minimap there, up down to Forest Elbow, which is T18. Uh, All of that pretty, pretty much has no runoff, so it feels very quick and it's very dangerous if you get it wrong. Yeah, certainly it's such a high concentration of corners in such a small space as well, as you can see, turns 11 down to turn 19 there onto the Conrad Strait. Anyway, let's have a look and see how the drivers are going to be uh, faring going into qualifying then, shall we? Because this is going to be very, very exciting for the Manufacturer Series. Out onto the track we are now then at the Mount Panorama Circuit, the Oceana region, of course. A lot of drivers from Australia, a couple from New Zealand there as well. So perhaps a bit of home knowledge here is going to be doing them some good. Yeah, maybe, of course. Bathurst is uh, definitely a staple of Australian motorsport for sure. And I'm sure a few Kiwis come over and have a look from time to time as well. We join the drivers just at the end of their first flying lap. It's car baskets and all kinds of sideways there, that Porsche. Makes it look easy though, now coming down to the last corner, down to Murray's corner. And we'll be setting our first lap timing to give us an idea of what we can expect from this field. So coming over to the timing line now, and the time that Carl Bass is going to set is a 2 minutes point three zero four with a 202.7 there, immediately by Adele later behind. And then GTR Freak does a 202.9, Mint GTR for 202.4, and then Kenamus on the Jag goes faster in a 202.3. Running out of breath here, Tom and Makosi, <laughs> the AMG. Uh, Blows them all out of the water to the 201.9, the first person into the 201. Yeah, crucial for these drivers really to getting those banker laps in earlier on in the session. What we'll probably see with a 10 minute qualifying session is drivers trying to get the fuel down as low as possible. Much like we saw in the Nations Cup race with the Oceana region drivers just trying to get that car as light as they possibly can to the end of the session, putting a new set of boots on it and then going out and setting one or two fast flying laps at the very end of this session. You can see there Nick Nicosi just going up through the cutting then, climbing up the mountain, and he is the fastest man by a comfortable margin, it's going to be said so far in this session. Side dog there in second place, he is in the Toyota FT1 Vision Gran Turismo machine, which of course is loosely based on the Supra 
which has been announced and unveiled officially to the public eye now as well. Here is Adam, who is third fastest in the Ford Mustang in this session so far. And now, of course, we wait for the drivers to just be burning that fuel off, setting those faster lap times. We have actually seen drivers who have been uh, faster in the early stages of the session with the heavier cars, though, Jimmy. So perhaps waiting until the end of it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to be going that much faster. The thing is, Bathurst is a very tricky circuit, so even if you have a car that's feeling better for you or a bit lighter, there's always, of course, driver error that might come into play as well. Uh, sometimes it's just about getting out there and getting a decent bank to lap in, which can put you higher up the field than you think it would in case your actual flying lap, the one you're already focusing on, doesn't come off the way you think. His line face there, well, there was line face in the Ferrari. Now we go back to Car Bass in the Porsche. He'll, he'll be into the pit lane now, get a fresh set of the medium compound of tyres, and then go out again to try and set a quicker lap. Just a reminder, our drivers have both the medium and hard tyres to, uh, to choose from. Uh, although I've not seen many people opt for the hard tyres at all uh, in a race situation, of course, it would be silly to use them in qualifying. Yeah, absolutely. The medium compound is undisputedly the faster tyre. You can see all the drivers have got about 80 kilos of fuel just over there and they're about left in their car at the moment. They're putting a new set of rubber onto, ready to go out and start their potentially final flying runs. It's about two minutes a, uh, a lap here, isn't it, really? So you've got to get an outlap in, you've got to start your final flying lap before that timer ends. We've got to get that final flying lap in the session. This, this will presumably be their last pit stop in the session and put a driver really following that theory before they go out on track for the final time. Carbass here, a lot of work to do for him. We saw that slide that he had at the end of his first flying lap in the session. He has got it all to do there from ninth position currently on the grid to improve at the uh, top of the order to get himself further up the top of the order before the end of this session. Here is uh, Mr Nick McCosey in the AMG Mercedes. And looking like the front engine cars having a decent time of things around here. Front engine cars in the top four positions with Porsche being the first well, mid or rear engine. I'm not quite sure how they classify it nowadays. Getting closer and closer to being mid-engine that Porsche uh, in the fifth. And then an Audi in sixth with a mid-engine car and DTR in the seventh. Great to see that. Let's get that counted there. I think that's the top eight cars are all different manufacturers, which is, uh, I love seeing that variation here in the manufacturer series. Yeah, absolutely, we do love that. The depth of field here is just incredible in terms of the drivers and also the cars as well. It's so lovely to see so many different cars and drivers fighting amongst one another as one produces such close racing. The uh, Bathurst circuit is an absolute favourite amongst motor racing fans for very good reason not least for the fantastic Australian countryside that you can see in the distance as we, uh, when we ride on board with the drivers. I'll tell you what, though, from driving this circuit experience, you essentially hold your breath for half of the lap, uh, hoping not to touch anything on the wall on the way over the mountain, then you finally get that uh, big exhale on the way down uh, Conrad Strait. Speeds up to about 170 mile an hour on your own, get up to nearly 180 in a sim street, about 175 really. For the chase, just tipping 170 mile an hour there, you get hard in the brakes, so about 100 meters more, but uh, Makosa there on an out are being nice and easy, not burning the tyres too much. Trying to make sure he's got a bit of a gap between himself and GTR Freak in front to see if he goes into the pits. He does not, so Makosa now is going to have to go for a hot lap and hope doesn't catch the car in front. Through into the final corner, then Murray's corner down the start, finish straight there, will go and in towards Hell Corner to 90 degree the left hand. There's the reason it's called Hell Corner is because there used to be a tree trees on the outside but it used to be a case of uh, before there was a lot of uh, more runoff implemented there in the modern day that used to be a tree and uh, the idea is that if you hit it then uh, you'd be going straight to hell after that that's why it, it bears its name of hell corner so i've been told in years gone very, by very, very friendly sounding corner it is certainly <laughs> it's, it, you know it's one of those ones that sounds very family friendly doesn't it <laughs> Well, yeah, usually I find myself going down the runoff there, but I'm not careful, so thank, uh, thankfully that's there now. Uh, so here is Side Dog then, uh, in the Toyota, uh, very nice time Toyota, I must say, coming up Mountain Straight, using the grunt of that Toyota engine. Uh, this is actually uphill, uh, you're basically beginning your climb up the mountain now, you see the elevation starts to change. You want to break up the access road there usually, but these guys are managing to break a little bit later. Now we come through Quarry Corner, you go out to the outside, trying to get on that kerb too much, there's a bit more, a bit further over, and it kind of drags you into the wall. Now for the cutting, this corner is camber to the left, so you want to try and tuck it in, accelerate towards the wall on the right, and then try and keep it flat all the way up this hill. That's where the bravery and confidence comes in. You're flat all here, you're still flat, you're still flat, and then when you, you have a little bit of a lift coming over this next left-hander here to make sure the car doesn't spear into the wall. Then you come up to one of my favourite parts of the course, which is Skyline. Uh, fantastic corner with not very much, well there is runoff there, but if you get it wrong you find yourself in that wall nicely. So now we go back, lunging downhill, 
down towards the dipper. The gravity now is working against you, so you've got to break a little bit earlier. It'd be nice and smooth on the downhill there. Side dog leg in there. All kinds of beans with right foot. And now coming to Forest Elbow, where you can finally exhale. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you can finally exhale there as well, Jimmy. I tell you what, I'm loving the livery that Side dog is running on that, reminiscent, of course, of the uh, McLaren Formula One cars in years gone by, and also V8 supercars, which have raced here in the Bathurst 1000 race in years gone by as well. Here is Nick McCosey, though, fastest man in this session. Drivers now on their final flying laps. What can Nick McCosey do? Can he improve his pole time? A 2.01.908 it is currently. Over the line comes Nick McCosey. Is it an improvement? It certainly is. Three tenths of a second faster right at the end of that one. What about Side Dog, though? We saw him on board a few moments ago, but he is eight tenths of a second down coming into that final sector. He's going to need a minor miracle to try and catch up on all of that lost time through Murray's corner. Out of it now, surely second best is where he's going to be qualifying unless he can pull something out of the bag. Over the line he comes, and sure enough, it is second fastest and not an improvement there for Side Dog at the chequered flag. No improvements coming really from a lot of drivers in the latter stages of that session there. Still a few drivers on faster laps. What about Mitch ETR? Can he do anything? He can. He goes to the front row of the grid right at the very end of that one. A 201.914. He is the only driver uh, of two drivers currently in those 201s. And Adam 2167, the last driver to complete a flying lap here, Jimmy to see if Adam can improve but with that lap Mint GTR dethroned some of the front engine cars and the front engine cars from the top four and now he's put that Porsche straight on the front row so we'll be happy with that here comes Adam across the line can he improve from fifth position let's see that time is we are we don't know we've cut off just before that's gone in I'm looking to my left hand side now it seems he did not improve it was still a 202.3 so he stays in fifth position but of course Nick McCoach is there a fantastic lap time 201.6 takes the pole position very impressive stuff indeed two drivers as we said in those 201 lap times there side dog on the second row of the grid the Jaguar of A.E. Canemos there also on the second row as well you look at a little bit further down the order and less than two seconds separating 16 drivers around an over two minute long lap that is very very close indeed usually we see a couple of drivers fall off the back there but uh, really interesting to see how close it is and let's go through to the details of the race now as you can see nine laps around this mount panorama circuit uh, just under 56 kilometers is what our drivers will be taking on today fuel consumption at times two so that will not be a worry however tire wear at times 14 which will very much be a worry which means there will definitely be a pit stop for pretty much everyone in this race unless as you can see in your screen someone opts to go for the hard tires yeah it's a bit of a risky strategy that because you can see it's on average 1.1 second per lap slower than the racing medium tire the smart money would be on going on the racing medium tires sticking on those racing medium tires uh for the race but uh, of course having a pit stop in between to get some fresher rubber and it could come down to strategy which could decide this one you can see a pit stop there will lose you 12 seconds in this race plus the tire change of two Two seconds as well so it's about 14 seconds in total that you will lose in a pit stop and strategy could be and has been in other regions as we've seen or you might not have seen very very important so let's keep a sneaky eye out and see what the drivers will opt to do with that said then let's get ready shall we and go over to the start of the race Onto the grid then and around into the final corner. Nick McCosey will lead the field. Group 3 machinery for the Manufacturer Series for the Oceana region race in the top 16 superstars. As they come across the line, they will head down towards the first corner for the first out of nine times of asking. And the race is underway and it's a good start from Nick McCosey. Predictably, everybody will lead their way down to the first corner in the same formation. And then on this straight is when we'll see the Simpson coming into effect. But Mint GTR has a big slide out of the first corner. That is going to compromise his run massively from third position and potentially allow A.E. Canemos there to close right up onto the back of him. Is anybody going to think about a move as they come up in towards the right-hander of Quarries? That's a great start there by Nick McCosey getting ahead and getting a bit of a gap over Adam behind. It goes wide of Quarries there. See a bad exit. And what Nick McCosey wants to try and do, if he can, is break the sim screen behind him now by the time he gets over the mountain and goes down at uh, Comrade Strait. But there you go, Adam in the background, all sorts of sideways. And by comparison, Nick is very nice and smooth. Yeah, absolutely right. You see the sparks flying off the bottom of the car as it bottoms out as they come over the brow of the hill through into Skyline, Jimmy's favourite part of the lap, as we heard in the qualifying session just before that. And look at Adam 2167 there. And but the gap that Nick McCosey has been able to pull out is quite staggering, really. 1.8 seconds over the space of less than half a lap. That is absolutely surreal pace from the young Australian. Of course, we uh, have to point out as well that both Adam 
uh, and Mint in second and third are on the harder compound of tyres, so Nick McCarthy does have that advantage there, and he will put away. So what that says to me is that Adam and uh, Mint, and also Side Dog as well as GTR Freaks, so quite a few people choosing the hard tyre option, are going to try and make this tyre go for the entire race without pitting. So. What that means is that Nick McCody needs to gain about 14 seconds or so, 15 seconds in these first few laps if he wants to come out ahead of his guys after the stop. But anyway, Mint GTR having to defend from Kenemos behind in that Jaguar F-type. He tries to switch back for the, uh, the right-hander, but now he's on the correct side coming down to the last corner at Murray. It's a great switch back there by Kenemos and the Jaguar. He'll go up to third place. What a move. Brilliant, brilliant stuff into Murray's corner there for Canemos. Took the advantage where he needed to, and now Mint GTR is going to come under pressure from Carvass, very close behind, down towards Hell Corner. They go for the second time of asking two 911s versus one another into the left hander. No moves being made there, but onto this straight is surely where the slipstream is going to come into effect. I'd love to be able to ride on board with Carbass and see that move being made from his point of view. We look at them now as they come down this straight. We do ride on board with Carbass just as the director. He's clearly listening to what we're saying. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. Up the brow of the hill we go into the right-hander of Quarries. He thinks better of oh. it and he gets onto the dirty part of the track, clips the white line, has a big old slide through there, manages to gather it all up with a dab of opposite log, but that is not going to be helping his charge or indeed his tyre life. I think he went far enough up to actually hit the grass there, Tom, which is why the car snapped so violently. Luckily, he gathered it back up again, but him being on those medium tyres, uh, that's not going to like that one bit. So... Right now we have uh, at the front of the field a medium runner leading from a hard runner, leading from a medium runner, leading from a hard runner, leading from a medium runner, leading from a hard runner, so we can keep going basically. But as you can see, both tyre compounds seem very viable at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, of course, there's nothing in the rules for these drivers that says they have to use both compounds of tyres. i tell you what, third place is getting pretty racy there as well, aren't they, between uh, Canemos and Mint GTR. That's a great little scrap going on as they come down through in towards Forest Elbow. But uh, yeah, there's nothing in the rules, as I say, that says the drivers have to use both compounds of tyres. So they can use the medium compound of tyres for the entirety of the race if they fancy doing a no-stopper. But if you're on the harder compound, as Jimmy said, the smart money would be on you doing that for the entirety of the race and hoping that you can keep within a safe distance of the drivers in front. At the moment, Nick McCosey has got about 3.8 seconds over Adam, who is on that harder compound of tyres. But Adam has got enough of a buffer currently to be relatively comfortable. Mid-GTR, though, is finding his way through on the side versus Kanemos, side by side they are he's going to be on the wrong part of the track though coming out of that chicane and it was a half attempted move there but it wasn't going to be one that was going to pay off I think Min GTR there, forgetting he's on the uh, he's got a bit of a tyre disadvantage uh, on those hard tyres, can't quite be as agile as Kanemos uh, Kanemos, sorry, in, uh, in front of him in that Jaguar car base though, on board with him, or car bass we'll, we'll, we'll decide on that at some point <laughs> uh, coming through Hell Corner, you see Min GTR a little bit further away from the apex than, uh, than car behind him, so we'll have a better run now coming up Mountain Straight, and more importantly he has a sip stream as well of course these guys are both fighting for that spot in the Porsche Manufacturing Final a bit later on this year, so there'll be no love lost between these guys even though they are technically kind of teammates up the inside goes car bass late on the break, through he goes, Min GTR has to yield in that hard compound of tyre goes down to fifth. Yeah, he's learned from his mistakes last time around, doesn't make the same one, so brilliant stuff there from Carbass or Carbass, either he really likes fish or he really likes playing the guitar, one of the two, up through the left-hander, in towards the uh, mountain we go, and you can see the slipping and sliding from mid-GTR as he just tried to get himself on the power there, just not getting the grip from that harder compound of tyres, and these first few laps on those hard tyres, Jimmy, are absolutely crucial for these guys if they're not going to be doing a pit stop. Yeah, definitely. The medium tyres are going to start falling away now, which is why you'll see McCosey not pulling away as quickly as he was from Adam 2167 in second place. The gap is now five seconds, and McCosey will be in probably the end of next lap or the lap after that. And that will mean Adam will likely take the lead. But of course, Mikosi after that will have the faster compound of tyre, but then has to uh, find the way past Adam on circuit. That, of course, is uh, completely ignoring if there are any spins or incidents. But uh, we know these guys better than that. They'll be trying their best not to have anything that will disturb their race. Yeah, absolutely. Down the back straight, the Conrod straight, as it's known, in towards the chase. You can see Nick Mikosi there using all of the track. And you can see the advantage he's now been able to pull out on lap three out of nine is over 5.2 seconds to the man in the Ford Mustang in second position. So let's see what Nick Mikosi does. He's going to continue onwards for now for another lap or so. He's not in the pit window there and thereabouts yet. The maximum lifespan of these medium tyres, as we saw in the race strategy before this, is about five laps or so. It's going to be interesting to see whether he'll pit before that or whether he'll decide to go a little bit on a little bit later. And uh, 
opt for a different strategy. Let's wait and find out. You can see him there being, again, very liberal with those track limits, isn't he? He's kicking up dust. We saw him doing that in the Nations Cup race. If you haven't seen that, go and tune into it because it's an absolute belter, I tell you. But Nick Mikosi there, again, just extending those track limits very much to the extreme. Yeah, the one to watch right now is the battle for second, I'd say, although here we are watching fourth and fifth instead. Min GTR and Carbass again together on the circuit. Min just closing up with that sixth screen, but Carbass will, I think, put away over the top of the mountain. The reason why I say second and third is because second is our fastest uh, hard tyre runner. There he is, Adam2167 in that quite bulky uh, for the Mustang Group 3 car. Oh, I can't help but like it. I always like an American V8. Making his way up the mountain now. And when he's going through the mountain on that hard compound tyre, he's essentially a, um, a buffer for the cars behind him. If you you can't really ever take going over the mountain unless you have a significant, I mean a proper significant advantage over the car in front of you. There's nothing that these cars are capable of, unfortunately, even with a tyre advantage and disadvantage. And actually going over the mountain, he is if you know the same speed, if not a little bit faster than Kinemos behind in the Jaguar, uh, who is on a uh, better compound of tyre. You can see now again the gap to Mikosi not opening up the same way it was the lap before. So I think those medium tyres are now starting to suffer a bit. Yeah, I think you're absolutely bob on there, Jimmy. Let's keep an eye out and see what the pace differential is going to be between the medium and the hard compound of tyres. You saw the uh, 911 there. I think that was uh, mid GTR just in the background again, having a slip and a slide. It's not the first time we've seen that. So again, those harder compound of tyres just not offering the grip that he would like over the brow of the hill. We go though in towards the chase, and you can just see how much Kanemos is able to close up on the back of Adam 2167. Is he going to think about a dive into the chicane? He's a bit too far back on this occasion, but he's certainly closing up, and he might. Might think about something into Murray's corner. Potentially, though, he will wait until that straight going in towards the left. The the right hander. Yeah, the race leader in, as you say there, Jimmy. And also fourth place man of Mid GTR into the pit lane. As well. That can't be Mid GTR. That's going to be Carbass. Surely it is Carbass. Yeah, into the pit lane. So he pops into the pit box on that medium compound of tyres. Down in towards the first corner we go, though. Adam 2167. Surely he's just a bit of a sitting duck at this stage. Well, what Adam really needs to do is think of the race as a whole and not just of this battle. If Kenemos is going to try and get past and put a move on him here, it's better for Adam just to let him go and not slow himself up too much. Though, if he can keep him behind, that's even better as well. He hasn't got to worry about fighting him. Yeah, the grunt of that um, V8 from the Ford Mustang is absolutely incredible. Wasn't able to close up at all in the slipstream there was the Jaguar F-Type of Kanemos. So let's keep a beady eye and see on how things go. We can see a penalty has been given for TRL Hole, who's not really featured at all in this race so far. He's down there in 15th position in the Honda at the moment. That red asterisk next to his name, the red dot rather I should say next to his name, does indicate that he has been given a time penalty, so he will serve that coming on to the Conrod straight. The leader by my maps, I can have down the field, is about 10 seconds now off, um, off Adam 2167. And he's got to make up those 10 seconds over the next few laps. And we've seen him in the first couple of laps, he wasn't able to pull away that much. But of course, the hard tie is going to start to go off a bit towards the end of the race. So it's still anyone's game at this point. But a fantastic performance by the Ford driver, I must say, really doing his manufacturer proud here at Bathurst. And of course, as you know, if you're an Australian motor racing fan, if you're a Ford fan, or you're a Holden fan. So Holden fans to give away, I think. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a Ford fan at the moment, you'll know that this Ford Mustang is, of course, competing in the Supercars Championship in 2019. We see, though, that it's coming under threat in this Group 3 race from Kanemos. But that straight line speed of the Ford is just incredible. You'd expect Kanemos to be right alongside him now. He does get alongside him. He does have to go the long way round, but he's going to have the inside line into the chicane. Side by side they come. Kanemos takes the lead away into that corner. Brilliant driving there from the Jaguar F-Type. Now, does he peel into the pit lane after this one? Will he go in? He's on the medium compound of tyre, but that compound of tyre is going to be very, very second hand at this point and going to be getting very worn indeed. I wonder if we'll see him try and go to the end. Because right now, uh, with Makosi already having his pit stop, this doesn't really make much sense to keep going round if he's looking to try and fight for the lead. Now, Adam2167 will know this too, so he'll be thinking about uh, trying to uh, maybe get that place back next time round. That medium tyre will only get worse uh, as time goes on. Here is Makosi right on the rear bumper of the uh, the GTR. This and there. Any memories being resurfaced there, Tom, for you or not? Yeah, I think you're quite <laughs> right there, Jimmy, as well. I mean, uh, let's not talk too much about that one, but I think we had a, a bit of an incident, didn't we, going on there? But I'll tell you what, he's so close, he can probably tell you who manufactured the gearbox on that Nissan GTR at the moment. Through the right-hander of Quarry Bend, he goes, and he's up into fifth position. Nicely and easily done there, not losing too much time. If he hadn't found his way through into that right-hander, he'd have been stuck behind him 
you would imagine, throughout the majority of this mountain section, which is going to be crucial to his race. As it stands now, he has clear track in front of him for the next few corners, and that is exactly what Nick McCosey needs to try and close that deficit down to the front-running group. That DTR, a bit of a brick compared to the other cars when you see it side by side, but uh, usually fairly quick down the straights, but this is a corner, uh, sorry, a track where I think a decent cornering uh, handling machine is definitely the thing you would like. So McCosey now, Let's look in front. He's got about uh, about two seconds to the next car, which is another hard runner. He's kind of got three hard runners in front from here, so he's going to have to a real battle to get by them. He's going to have to try and in these the next couple of laps, really realistically, he has to do it really at the end of lap seven for the tyres start going the other way again. He needs to use these as much as he possibly can. The gap at the front, though, is still fairly close. It's about six tenths, about half a second between the two. Adam now using that grunt of that four Mustang. Look at that. He just reels him in in a straight line. It's crazy how much speed that Mustang Tang has and with a slipstream too, he's not going to quite be close enough. But he gained about half a second there, just in the straight in the background. There, side dog looks up the inside of mid GTR and up the inside goes side dog. We didn't see that coming right to the last second up into a podium position. What a pass there, but it's not over. Coming down to Murray's corner now, mid GTR looks to the inside. Side dog, side dog sits in the middle of the circuit, says, No, thank you, mate. Keeps him behind and up to third goes side dog. Very impressive indeed. So, both those drivers on the harder compound of tyre over the start finish line, they come to start their seventh lap out of nine. And this top four, not separated by too much of a margin, but it's the man in fifth place that we certainly need to keep a very, very big eye on. He goes a little bit wider than that first corner, Nick McCosey. Seems to be his driving style in these Group 3 cars is just to use all of the track, kick up the dust. It doesn't cause him to lose too much time. But the man that is impressing me no end at the moment is Canabos. He's able to just hold the charge so far of this Ford Mustang that Adam2167 is driving. But for how long? Is it only a waiting game? That medium tyre is going to be very, very past its best at the moment. So you're seeing right now, essentially, all the cars that have a chance of winning this race within one shot. Min oh! GTR gets all kinds of wrong at the cutting, and he has to, oh, he gets right in front of uh, McCosey there, slows him up on the apex of the coming up the hill, so that's going to slow McCosey up a little bit, but uh, I think they're both back up to speed again, and now we have third, fourth, and fifth in your picture. Right now, being led by side of McCosey, has nowhere to go over the mountain. He's got to wait for Min GTR to gather himself back up, but you can see just ahead of us now, they're second place, so we're really gaining on the pack on board with Nick McCosey coming back downhill now this is where those soft tyres are really so those medium tyres are really going to come into play down here the extra grip over the hards there's a bit more manoeuvrability down there and you can see there's just no way past the McCosey we can have a look up the inside of the forest hill but under brakes no not quite but now he's going to have a slipstream sure this is a done deal yeah he needs to think ahead doesn't he going through the forest elbow look at how much drive he got he did think ahead he's side by side with the Porsche driver as they come down through the Conrod straight he's got the outside line going into the chase but he's got superior grip but that Porsche 911 it's pretty fast in a straight line they're still able to run side by side McCosey needs to try and pick up the slipstream of the Toyota in front he's already ahead before they go into the chase and now his next target is going to be Sidog. this is absolutely brilliant racing two laps are going to be remaining at the check and flag. The race lead is up for grabs though as well as Canemos and Adam go side by side. Adam with the outside line down towards Murray's corner. He's not able to find a way through there but these two are squabbling. It's going to allow that group of three drivers to close up isn't it? Yeah, McCosey is now right on the back of Sonic. He might even have him to help corner. He will. He's over the start finish line. Nick McCosey goes up from fifth to third in only a couple of corners and now his sights are firmly set on the top two. That's Adam and Kenemos, Adam has got past Kenemos there, so that must have been going into hell corner. We missed that one too, and now he has the grunt of the Mustang to try and keep the Jaguar behind. He's got the inside line, he's defending it for all he's worth. Coming into quarry corner, then he'll sit on the inside. Kenemos gets onto the white line, nearly spins it actually, just like gathers it back up again, but then has to settle for second place, and that means now he is Makosi's target, and Adam can try and get away. Yeah, he's sliding around like a dog on ice at the moment, is Nick Makosi. Sorry, Nick McCosey is Canemos, rather, those medium tyres. He's not made a stop. He's trying to go to the end of it, but he's got absolutely no grip at all underneath him. And he's doing a great job to continue battling with Adam 2167. The converse, of course, is that this man here, Nick McCosey, he's been reeling them in corner by corner, lap after lap. And he's going to surely be in contention for this race lead by the end of this lap as well. This is an absolutely thrilling end to this Group 3 race in the Manufacturer Series for the Oceana Top 16. 
brilliant, brilliant stuff coming down in towards the Forest Elbow for the penultimate time. Oh, Kanemos gets it sideways. He's into the wall. He gets a bit of a tap there from Nick Mikosi as well. They run side by side down towards the Forest Elbow. Kanemos, he's got the trap position. He's not got the line. And here comes Seidel coming through as well. This is so close. This is absolutely fantastic. This is what Adam needs at the front of the pack now. A little bit of breathing from a second now between himself and second place. But here comes Mikosi. He needs to get past Kanemos now. It needs to be down past the chase. Otherwise, he's not going to have a chance of catching the Ford driver. Kenemos, of course, defending it. Side dog actually has the toe from Kenemos behind whilst Nick is trying to go around the outside. So there's now three cars coming down towards Chicane. Kenemos keeps the position. This is absolutely disaster for Makosi behind. He needs to get it done sooner rather than later. Now he looks to the outside. A bit on the outside for Murray's corner coming down the bottom here. But he has the tyre advantage, so he might be able to run it round later on the brakes. Goes round the outside. Just about does it. What a move by Makosi. Oh, oh no! no! There's contact and he goes round! Disaster for Nick Mikosi in the final corner. He gets tapped by Kanemos. A penalty has been awarded to the driver now in third position. Kanemos has got a penalty. Nick Mikosi has gathered it back up. He's inside the top five, but Kanemos is going to drop right back from that one. And that was just very, very unfortunate set of timing and circumstances, I think, for both drivers there. But that has allowed now Sidog to get himself up into second position. And Mint GTR is on the podium currently as it stands in third place. But he's trying to make it second to get ahead of the Toyota. There it is. So this is absolutely perfect for Adam in front. But Mikosi is not done yet. I think now he is seeing red. He's not going to wait for these guys over the mountain. He knows he could have won this race. And now second is probably going to be the best he can do. So what can he do coming over the mountain for the last time? Miss AMG on the superior rubber. Mint GTR gets it sideways. But there's nothing that Mikosi can do. He takes the racing line back again. There's not really much of a, a run through there. And this is the frustration of racing at Bathurst. You just have to wait over the top of the mountain. The Shakara is that much quicker. It's just not. And all the while, Sidog is getting away. And all the way, all the while, Adam is getting away. This is looking more and more as it's going to be a Ford win here at Bathurst. Absolutely. Well, damage limitation for Nick Mikosi. If he can get himself onto the roster at the end of this one, it'll do him some wonders for his charge in the top 16 superstars so far. This is an absolutely thrilling end to the race. Disappointing to have had that contact onto the final lap. You see Nick Mikosi, a bit of a mistake there going into the Forest Elbow. That loses him a bit of time behind the Porsche there as well. So he might not even be able to get himself on the podium. Let's see what sort of a slip through, what sort of a run he can get coming down this Conrad straight. I think he was trying to launch himself out. But anyway, here he goes to the inside of the chase. That looks like a done deal to me. I'm not sure Min DTR can defend this on the harder compound of tyre. Inside of the chase then goes Mikosi up into third position. Min GTR might try to come back to him. No, he thinks better of it. But whilst all that is going on, and while Nick Mikosi does manage just about to get up to third place, this man, Adam2167, did something that we didn't think was possible, took the hard tyre, went for a no-stop, kept the pressure off him, and he wins here at Bathurst. What a race for Adam. What a brilliant victory for Ford as well. Sidog comes home for an unlikely second position and Nick Mikosi does manage to salvage that final podium position in third place. A.E. Kanemos there, he'll be sick as a parrot after that race inside the top five, but a disappointing end to what could have otherwise been a very promising race. And I tell you what, a quiet race there for the BMW, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle, I should say, rather, of GTX 601. We didn't talk at all about it. Good this, result, though. A good result, though. He, as you say there, Jimmy, inside the top six, brilliant finish to the end of that one here's Carl Bass but well, we saw a lot of him featuring in the start of that race a disappointing end to it though down there in 14th position finishing that Porsche 911 way down than he, or way further down than he would have liked but Adam 2167 is the victor at the end of that race a brilliant result for him as you said Jimmy he did what we thought was going to be nearly impossible and Sidog as well credit to him but not pitting as well during that race and finishing in second position. You could see just how much faster though Nick Mikosi was on that medium compound of tyre in terms of his lap time, a 201.948. Brilliant racing. That's just how the strategy goes when you go for that. It's a bit of a shame there for Kenemus. I'm, I'm sure that him and Mikosi are going to have a couple of words after that. It was a little bit uh, robust and of course really cost them both a decent result here. Rounding off then the uh, the top results there. A GTR freak in ninth. A decent running in the Nissan. Not seen much of that over the course of the week. So good to see it represented here, of course. Car Bass, as you said, went from being quite competitive to finishing down in 14th, so uh, not the best race for him. Nope, certainly not. Well, what does this mean for the race standings and the points rankings after round eight of the Manufacturer Series for the Oceana region?
Well, here are the standings then. Adam, 2167, still leads the way. You can see Nick McCosey there in second position and Psydog now in third place as well. All, of course, leading for their respective manufacturer, Carbass, though, despite that disappointing result, still just holds on to being the lead Porsche driver in the point standings, but by a very small margin, fewer than 100 points separating those two. So it's very much all to play for as we go into the next round of the championship, Jimmy. Yeah, definitely. Those guys will be... Uh... Uh, eyeing each other up, I'm sure, going into the next race. Here is the 9th to 16th. As you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, all those numbers that have been highlighted in red represent a best race result or a good uh, a counted race result, so to speak. So anyone with that has kind of moved up a little bit in the standings as well. Uh, good to notice that the uh, Conzio there, he, he moved up a little bit in the high on day. We didn't really mention that that, that much, to be honest. But he, he moved up a little bit from his race. And a GTX 601 in that VW moves up to 12th with that fantastic result in 6th at Bathurst. Absolutely fantastic what a brilliant manufacturer series race whatever you do tune in to the 25th of may for the next top 16 superstars event it is going to be absolutely brilliant see you then